simplifying your foods is another strategy. Get a book uh, called Cancer Outside the Box by my uh, friend Ty Bollinger. And there's some good tips there. And then don't forget about the mental and emotional strategies. Visualization, for example, helps a lot of folks. And don't be dismissive. I, I'm not saying you are, Steve, but anybody out there who's, who's dismissive of the idea of using visualization, you really got to look into it. The athletes use it all the time. And I've often said that if an athlete is doing something, that's something we want to at least start paying attention to. And athletes use visualization all the time. And this can be very helpful for dealing with anything in the body, but particularly things that seem out of control, like cancer. So uh, I want to throw a couple other things in there. Uh, chelation therapy is always a good idea for everybody, but especially if you're dealing with cancer and using chelating nutrients, that can help as well. And don't forget about immune-boosting bone soup, which not only boosts the immune system, but it's also a good source of protein, which is important for building. And that's by no means exhaustive, but that'll give you a good idea there, Steve. Does that help? It helps an awful lot. And by the way, I recorded all of this to play good. for him. Good deal. Uh, he he also, I think, went through some form of stem cell treatment. Yeah, I, that's one of the ways. That's the latest high tech way of doing. It. You know why? It makes a boatload of money, and and your friend probably might not have had to pay for it, but we all paid. We all pay via the insurance. Everybody pays for for these super high tech pro, uh, high tech uh, uh, medical interventions. While these companies make off like bandits, and very few people get better. Although some of the literature on stem cell therapy is kind of compelling, I have to say. But the problem is, it's the soil that's dirty. If you replace right. this, you know, when they talk about healing cancer with these things, they're talking about five-year survival. You ever hear that term, five-year survival? That's how they assess how if you're completely cured of cancer, if you have a five-year survival. But that doesn't mean that you've, got, you've gotten rid of the problem. And what we're talking about here on this program, we talk about all, every day on this program, is getting rid of the problem, not simply eliminating the cancer, but cleaning up the soil. Steve, i got to go. i got a bunch of calls here. Thanks so much for your kind words, and have yourself a great day in Santa Cruz, California. Let's go to Angela in Florida. Good morning, Angela. What's up? Good morning. Greetings. Uh, how are you? I'm doing good. What's going on today? Great. I want to tell you what's going on and then kind of ask a question to maybe clarify. So I've just been trying to lessen body fat and kind of keep a steady weight just by working out and eating right and also doing a little bit of fasting. Okay. Um, but I wanted to know, as far as adrenal fatigue, I think you said something about um, harboring fat around the waist if you're suffering from adrenal fatigue. Uh, I didn't that say that. I, uh, I didn't say that, but that would definitely that would be an issue. They, they're related to each other. Uh, fat around the middle is, is related to sugar and insulin, and adrenal fatigue is also related to sugar and insulin problems. So via the sugar connection, there is a relationship. Adrenal fatigue is a, is a significant problem, uh, and there's lots of reasons why this will occur. Mostly, well... You know, it's the same thing. Nutritional deficiency, lack of oxygen, and toxicity in the body. But with the adrenals, because of the relationship, the very close connection between the brain, between how we think, I should say, the mind, really, and the adrenal glands, emotional stress, mental stress issues, it's not always going to be just nutritional or oxygen or, de or toxic uh, toxicity. And, I, you know, I know I say this periodically, and it's very important to recognize, because in the world of nutrition, a lot of nutritionists, a lot of people who are nutritionally minded, healthcare professionals, professionals, alternative practitioners sometimes, you know, and certainly doctors, they'll marginalize this mental and emotional aspect. And you can't, especially when it comes to the adrenal glands, because the adrenal glands are our survival glands. And when our survival is threatened, whether it's for reals or whether it's just imaginary, the adrenal glands don't know the difference. You see what I'm saying, Angela? So it's not just going to be nutritional. But from a nutritional standpoint, vitamin C is your key adrenal nutrient. In fact, vitamin C and zinc are the two most important adrenal nutrients. Not like they're the only ones. Magnesium is important. Essential fatty acids are important. You can use something called liquid adrenal extract. That can help. Vitamin B12 can help, especially vitamin B B12 injections. All your B vitamins are important for the adrenals, particularly vitamin B5, which is another one of those underappreciated vitamins. Pantothenic acid, really important for the adrenal glands. Uh, keeping your sugar intake down in addition to using the sweeties, using magnesium, magnesium and alpha lipoic acid and selenium and sulfur, all of which can help you process sugar. The B vitamins are very important for helping you process sugar. Don't forget slow, deep breathing. That's also very important. And then uh, certainly good nutrition, you know, the, the all-around basic good nutrients, the, the mighty 90 essential nutrients. There's also an important relationship 
between hormones in the adrenal gland, hormone health in the adrenal glands. So making sure you're using, not only, not only using your essential fatty acids, which are important for hormone production, but also things like DHEA, which I don't know if you've heard of, very important adrenal, uh, can be a very helpful adrenal nutrient. You gotta make sure you play with the dose. You don't wanna take too much DHEA. There's a form of DHEA called 7-keto. DHEA. Sometimes DHEA will give you some side effects, uh, particularly hairy kinds of things. And 7-keto DHEA, which is much more expensive, you, you'll be able to avoid some of, those, uh, some of those unpleasant side effects. Also, a hormone that we'll be talking about here in the next few days, something called pregnenolone. That can also be helpful for adrenal fatigue issues. And last but not least, because of this whole fatty connection, using things like lecithin and digestive enzymes can also be, uh, can also be helpful. Less and digestive enzymes to help you process fats. I got to move, Angela. Does that help you? Yes, thank you. Oh, okay, have a beautiful day. Thanks for calling. Appreciate it. Jim in Massachusetts got about a minute. What's going on, man? Yeah, uh, thanks for taking my call, Ben. I'll be real quick here. Um, I was uh, dealing with breakouts on the skin, on, on the forehead and the cheeks, just rashes and um, some pimples. Anyway, um, I, uh, I started taking your the tangy tangerine and the... Uh, fish oil and the vitamin A and the zinc and everything, and I've been always able to kind of control it. Now it's significant. It's, it's gotten way worse. It's gotten a lot worse. Okay, well, a couple... Okay, a couple things. A couple things. First of all, it wouldn't be the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. Could be the vitamin A and the essential fatty acids. I don't know necessarily that I would make that connection. It's unusual, but it sounds like you're not processing fats correctly. That would be my guess. So what you want to do is stop the vitamin E and the essential fatty acids and see what happens. Okay, that's first of all. And you're going to have to play around with it. I find that connection to be unlikely, although anything's possible. So you want to experiment a little bit. Because these are essential nutrients. I mean, they're not optional. So it wouldn't make sense for you to break out just from an essential nutrient. However, if you're not processing it correctly, that can happen. And so what you want to do is play around with it by stopping and then starting, stopping, and then starting. Now, along with that, you're going to want to help uh, use all the strategies for helping your body process fats and absorb fats. And I will be going with the ultimate enzymes, especially after meals, apple cider vinegar, lecithin, as we talked about with our last caller, can be helpful. You can also use something called uh, betaine, HCL, or also bile salts. You'll get some of those in the ultimate enzymes. And get yourself on probiotics too, uh, the ultimate enzymes, or the, um, I'm sorry, the, the, uh, the nightly essence. And then last, but most certainly not least, look for food allergies and food intolerances. Do a food diary. It sounds like you may have some digestive things going on. Thanks for your call, Jim. Appreciate it. That's all the time we have for today. We'll be back at you tomorrow with more good health information. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for listening. Have a wonderful, beautiful, spectacular day. We'll talk to you all later, folks. Bye for now.